The Todd Shapiro Show. Canada Laughs, Sirius XM 168. From Bovedink.com. B-O-V-E-D-A. And now it's time for a cannabis catch-up brought to you by Bovedink. I-N-C <laughs> dot com. Lance Lambert. Hey, Lance. How you doing, buddy? I'm good, man. So so hold on. Wait a minute. You were in my backyard, and I wasn't even here to catch up with you. Is, is that what I'm understanding now? Yeah, I flew in <laughs> real quick to L.A., in and out. I was in and out, in and out, in and out. I don't even remember. It was such a whirlwind. I had a bunch of drinks, to be honest. And uh, yeah, it was a great time. LA is a great is a great place. But you're you're still you're like an hour from LA, right? A little more. Yeah, yeah, just about. Uh, well, yeah, and it's funny. You... Uh oh, that was really funny. Uh oh, Lance, Lance, dude. Can you hear me now? We got you now. We got you now, brother. Uh, okay. All right. Yeah. So I'm I'm about 45 minutes or an hour north of LA. I'm actually driving through it. I apologize. Thank you guys. I'm driving to the airport right now down into LA. So sorry for the uh, poor connection. No, all good, man. That was the thing. It was funny. I, I noticed driving because there's so many mountains and stuff uh, that, that whenever you're moving around, the signal's not always great there. Yeah, go figure. That and 26 million people on their cell phones while driving. You know, something. <laughs> yeah, a bunch of people. So, Lance, uh, why don't we do this real quick this week, then? I'm so happy to uh, catch up with you. And But before I do, I was reading your Twitter account over, over a couple days ago, and you were, like, on some Alaskan airline stuff, and, like, you guys had to be diverted because you had a belligerent passenger. Was that freaky? Oh, my gosh, man. So, you know, uh, you probably know better than anyone, Todd. I'm constantly on planes, right, traveling everywhere. Oh, I thought you were going to say I'm belligerent in airplanes. <laughs> I would know that. <laughs> That's where you're, you're going there, pal. I uh, don't drink much alcohol, so that wasn't me. But, no, you know, I've been jet-setting all over. And, yeah, I was flying home. It was last night. It was actually coming on. Yeah, I love Alaska Airlines, great airline. Uh, but, yeah, we were flying from SeaTech from Seattle back down here to Southern California to Burbank. And um, we were probably about an hour and a half into the two-and-a-half-hour flight. And, uh, yeah, just a ruckus. Some guy who, I guess, drank too much. Almost seemed like he is on something more than alcohol. But uh, started acting up, and he accosted a few of the flight attendants. And that, of course, is a federal offense here in the state. So, yeah. Um, all I had to say was, you know, if they actually serve cannabis, not alcohol, on airplanes, we'd probably not have so many of those issues. That's my opinion. Yeah, dude, that's um, – everything's got to change. But you guys in America, are you, are you getting any closer to it? We catch up every week with you. Any, any, any news towards that direction at all after these midterms? I keep hearing some sort of little rumors. No. Yeah, I mean, you know, yeah, the midterms are coming up, uh, gosh, a week away. And uh, I know we talked about that a little bit. So that's all the elections that go on between the big primary, the presidential election. So you have a lot of uh, House and Senate seats. You have a lot of uh, bills and, um, you know, potential, of course, amendments to existing constitutions for legalization. I think we discussed, you know, there's a few states that are up there. Four states, um, right, to, to, to legalize. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Oklahoma, Utah, Michigan. Um, and, and just being in Utah, it does sound like good things there. It, it might end up turning out a little bit different than we would hope for, but, you know, we'll take it. I mean, that's definitely that's a big a big thing. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot going on with the midterm, but I don't know. I don't, I don't see the big picture coming into fruition yet, even though our, our friends to the north, uh, you guys are doing great. I mean, gosh, we, we were talking to one of our clients up there in Vancouver. They thought they had a three-month supply. They sold out in three hours on the 17th. Yeah, it's really it's I interesting mean, what's that. going on right now in Canada because as, if anyone knows who follows this stuff, they, they, there's like the Ontario government had to kind of revamp how they're going to go and do it. They already shut down some stores, yep. sold out most supply everywhere. People are, are, I think, overall are, are enjoying this experience of being able to get legal weed. Uh, I think the, the pot investors are a little shaking their heads right now, <laughs> let's I'll tell you that much, because yeah. it, it's wild how things have, have, including today, things have come down uh, a, a, sh a shit ton, to be quite honest. Uh, even though that you would think that, that this success of this launch, meaning that there's always going to be demand for this stuff. It, it might help it, but it doesn't seem to. Can do you, I mean, not to get into the stock world and stuff, but is that something that you you understand or know of about in terms of supply and and are we always going to be out of supply? No, I don't see that happening. You know, and again, the advantage that Canada has on the global landscape. I mean, you guys just got a shipment 
first ever shipment of medical cannabis up from Jamaica last month. Uh, yeah, you know, Canada in general, the LPs has crops on the ground in Portugal, business happenings all across Europe and even Australia. I think you guys will be in an okay place, but it's almost a bit of that, that uh, buzz, if you will, pardon the pun, the same thing we saw in Denver, right? So when Denver was the first ever what we now call adult use state, it was just, it was such a big thing. I mean, for all ages, 21 and over, to be able to go in and legally purchase cannabis, this thing that's been, you know, obviously held under prohibition since the 30s. Um, so I could see it calming down a little bit, and uh, Canada's uh, manufacturing will get caught up. There's a lot of LPs that they're, they're projected to be able to do a million-plus kilos a year, which is more than any operation here in the States. Yeah, and that's a very good point you make. It, it would be like, say, getting a hockey team for the first time. I'm sure you'd sell out the first game. You might yeah. not sell out game you know, 40 by the time the season ends if the team's not doing that well. So. Yeah. So yeah, I think that you're right. There's this, there's this euphoria. People just want to do it. Say they did it. Say they're a part of history. Oh well, yeah, that's a good point. It, it, this whole thing still, really, all of it amazing. I mean, uh, we we talk every single week, Lance, and and it all all of it amazes me. What are the, is there anything about this pot industry and coming to fruition that that still amazes you? Yeah, you know, the one thing that still surprises me is just how much of an international movement it is. So uh, I'm literally, I'm, I'm heading to the airport right now, flying out to Amsterdam for meetings, then on to Berlin, and then finish up uh, with a few days in Prague for cannabis. So all three of those countries, at some level or, an, or another, have an iteration of decriminalization or legalization of cannabis. And, and I still think it's crazy. A friend's like, well, why do you go to Australia? Why do you go to South America? It's like, this is everywhere, guys. I mean, there are countries, there's 45 countries around the world that have either legalized medical, adult use, or decriminalized. And a good example would be Portugal. So Portugal, if you have a little minute to, to look up where they're at, they decriminalized all drugs. They said, we're done, we're over it, all this is ridiculous. And then they instated a medical cannabis program. I mean, that's huge. That's huge for any size country, you know, first, second, or third world, to take that kind of approach towards um, towards drugs in general, but but specifically towards the plant, towards cannabis, and being forward thinking about, hey, we're okay with this. This is something natural. And I, I think it goes back to Utah too. You know, it's um, that's the state again. You have uh, LDS, the church. Everyone knows Latter-day Saints. Saints, Mormons are very dominant in Utah. Uh, but even the church has come around and saying, we know this helps people. We know it's of the earth. It's natural. Um, and it's something that shouldn't necessarily be associated with, uh, you know, with criminalization or drug or prohibition. It's, it, it still surprised me every day. Uh, and my last question to you, just because the, the audio is not the greatest on, on the phone today, Lance, but we'll catch up with you for sure next week. And, and we do wish you safe travels. Do, do you think, I mean, do you still think that Trump could come out and say anything? <laughs> I don't know. I I still like your opinion. I brought it up more than once, Todd, that um, the plausibility of him trying to win a second term with this, I, I just don't think the masses are going to fall for that move. Yeah. Um, having said that, you know, I, I talked to an, invest, an investigative reporter. Hmm. Her name's Angela Vaca. She's been in the, the industry for years now, like myself. And uh, she's actually tracking some investments back to the Trump camp in this industry. Now, that I found extremely inter wow. interesting because it's six for you in this country. It's extreme capitalism. I don't know. I keep using that phrase. Maybe I should coin it. But it really, it very much is. It's all of a sudden, okay, what angle can we play to get the most financial gain as everything from, you know, a, a head of a Fortune 500 to a, a head of the free world? I mean, it's. It's unfortunate, but I hope she continues to investigate, and I hope she continues to share this information, um, you know, of tracking these these investments back, because that, that says a lot. That means a lot. I mean, that's definitely yeah, that, something that um, would surprise everyone. That mean a, yeah, it would mean a ton. Okay, Lance, uh, and just my, uh, last second here, any any new Bovida products that, that we should know about? You know, we always have stuff in the works. Uh, we definitely do have some things planned for the new year. I'm excited. Our, our big, you guys have the Lift Expo up there in Toronto, which is your biggest cannabis-centric uh, industry event. Ours is actually down here in Las Vegas for MJ Biz. Side note, we'd love to have you as a guest. I've always got a ticket for you to attend any of these, but that's one where it just blow your socks off. Um, we are going to be uh, talking to some strategic partners with uh, a few things we have in the works for 2019. So 2019 is really going to be the big year for us. 
um, as far as innovation and technology and making sure we're four steps ahead of, of everything. When am I when am I getting uh, when am I having a wicked weekend in Vegas? When is that weekend? <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, that would be um, I'm actually flying out there next Sunday. Technically, the show is the 14th, 15th, 16th. Um, but we actually sponsor this group called Hero Grown, uh, formerly um, Weed for Warriors. And uh, there's a golf tournament on Monday. Definitely have a spot for you on that foursome. Um, we have the Attach annual board meeting, uh, which is the American Trade association for cannabis and hemp that's tuesday and then uh, mj business wednesday thursday friday so man you, you name the, the day you want to come down and i'll make sure uh you get in knee deep and see exactly what the industry is all about buddy i love it man lance thanks so much for your time safe travels will you enjoy uh europe and uh, we can't wait to get back to catch up with us and tell us all about it likewise hey thanks so much i appreciate it okay cheers pal the todd shapiro show you are the greatest hero in American history. Sirius XM, Canada Laughs, Channel 168.